Sam. Hail Sam. Hi, it's Robert Mitchell and I'm here at the 2015 Toronto International Film Festival. I'm here for the world premiere of The Mind's Eye. Good, how are you? Pretty Great good. Seeing you. Congratulations on getting back to Midnight Madness. Thank you. It's fucking, I can't believe this. This is awesome. This is like what I engineered the movie for. It's good. It's amazing. Two years, like uh, uh, 2013 and now 2015. I know, it's unbelievable. I, uh, I almost can't believe it. I can't, we finished movies so, so recently that I can't believe we're, we're here. It's fucking weird. But it's awesome. I'm so happy. It's, it's, uh, it's great. Tell me the uh, story of The Mind's Eye. Yeah, uh, so I cast Graham and I wrote the role for him who was from Almost Human and he plays basically a telekinetic drifter along the lines of a John Rambo in the first in First Blood except he has telekinetic powers and the cops push him a little too far he gets involved in some issues and a doctor takes him in who wants to experiment on him. So it kind of just escalates from there and avalanches and just explodes from there. So uh, that's all I want to give away right now. Uh, I play Zach Connors. Uh, Zach is a drifter. He prefers to be on his own uh, because he's got a, uh, a, a telekinetic power that he can't quite control. Uh, and so uh, uh, at the start of the film, he's searching for the love of his life. And uh, he ends up falling into the hands of Dr. Michael Slovak, who runs a center for psychokinesis that he claims can help Zach conquer his powers. And bad things happen. Sure, I play Dr. Slovak, Dr. Michael Slovak. I run the Institute for Telekinesics uh, Research. And uh, I'm kind of the heavy of the piece, and uh, Graham's kind of the hero. So we, uh, we uh, have a contra temps, and it's uh, hopefully exciting. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the character you're playing and uh, how you would prepare for such a crazy role? Uh, well, I've been preparing my whole life, you know, to do the telekinesis scene, and otherwise, uh, it's just funny, now my job is to play the old guy, I'm like the dad, so it's kind of nice, I come home, everything's cool, and, and you don't know what my uh, powers are, and, and in the movie's about, you know, my son, of course, Graham, and, uh, and then something happens in the house. How have you grown as a filmmaker? Um, it's just, you know, we made almost for so little money and like we just did so much ridiculous stuff with this. It's like, I'm going to make this movie, but I'm going to take all additional money and put it in front of the camera. And I'm going to blow shit up. I'm going to fucking rip people apart. I'm just going to have heads explode. I'm going to have real squibs. I'm going to have real explosions. And that's what we did. And, it's, and I'm really happy. And we had a blizzard during the movie that was not expected. And it was the biggest nightmare ever while shooting. But it, it looks amazing. Like... And I was wondering, uh, from the stills I'm seeing in that, this looks like a really intense, gore-drenched picture. How do you uh, prepare for such a thing? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's full of amazing practical effects uh, that are are it's you know blood drenched and and snowy with fire. It's amazing. I mean I, I you know I'm a, I'm a fan of genre films anyway, and so I just try to look at the role and and uh, think to myself you know how you know how would I naturally be in this crazy environment and uh, go from there. Just keep it honest and keep it true and and uh, give Zach life. Well, and uh, you've shot this one in Rhode Island, like almost human, and there was like crazy snow, blizzards and all that. What was that experience like to endure those conditions while uh, doing this? It was incredibly cold. It was brutal. It was rough. But at the same time, you know, we're there with Joe Bigas, who is, is our, you know, commander in chief, and he's there shoveling snow. He's the first one on set, the last one to leave. And how can you not, you know, be inspired to go work in the freezing cold? I mean, it was negative below almost every day that we were shooting, all night outside shoots, and and you see Joe up there, and he's, you know, he doesn't care. He's filming. We're making an awesome movie, and uh, that's that was the spirit of the whole production. How much fun was it to be in this film? Oh, it was extraordinary fun. I mean, you knew it would be. I mean, it, you know, all the circumstances were just perfect. We were freezing our butts off in rural Rhode Island, you know, working with fun people. A lot of us had worked together before. Um, and, uh, you know, you're doing a movie that's science fiction and horror and uh, you got a great effects team and it was just a ball. Well, and I guess that would tie into the fun, but what draws you? You've been in a number of genre pictures before and what draws you to being uh, in a horror film? I think it's it's the fat paycheck, really. That that's really what it is. It's just uh, extraordinarily well taken care of. No, uh, I love working with guys who are trying 
desperately to get their vision in front of the camera. And Joe's a perfect example of that. Larry's a perfect example. Ty West, Glenn McQuay, all these guys, they are like desperate to make this picture. And when they take that, you know, that stance, you can't. You get swept up in it, and you say, "Okay, whatever you need, you know, you lead, and I'll follow." And that and that works really well. So it's good to return back to your roots of horror filming. Oh yeah, I mean that's what I like about doing uh, other people's movies. Uh, as an actor, I'll come in and just like to be on a set with a lot of energetic uh, folks who are really uh, committed. It's the way we always have made movies, and it's invigorating. Keeps me young, youngish. It keeps your passion going to make your own pictures. Uh, absolutely, and it's true. I really, literally go back invigorated and like you know. Oh, we gotta. Why are we chasing after all the money and the movie stars? Let's just make a movie. So I actually did that this summer. It was really fun uh, with my son directing. And it was just that. It was a way to return to uh, the smaller film, lower budget, more run and gun because, uh, uh, because well, it's just a kid directing. <laughs> I was going to ask, you shot your first film in Rhode Island, you went yeah. back for this film, and both in the winter, and yeah. what was that experience like, and how did it aid the film? Well, I was kind of nervous that this movie was going to look too much like Almost Human, because we had to shoot in the winter. I originally wanted to shoot this in the fall, money just didn't come through in time, we couldn't get that look, so we had to push to the winter, but luckily, now, uh, we got a gigantic blizzard that coated the place in snow, so it's like, okay, this movie looks like the fucking brood, you know, it looks like Fargo, but with telekinesis, so I'm kind of glad it got delayed, you know, it looks amazing, like, and while everybody was just bitching about what a nightmare it was, you look at the footage and you're like, wow, like, that we could not have planned this, like, nothing ever could have, like, made this look this awesome besides Mother Nature, and it just... For all the for all the ridiculous back breaking heartache it was, it's so worth it. Well, there's that old adage in film: pain is temporary, and film is forever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like this, like those three months we suffered, this shit's gonna be forever. And I'm glad that it's a blanket of blizzard forever. You know what I mean? It's like telekinetic blood and snow, and it's just, it's just fucking awesome. So. Oh, I was curious when you read Joe's script. What re, uh, what did you respond to? And you're like, oh, I will act in this picture. Oh, well, it's so ambitious and crazy, and it, we haven't seen telekinesis for a while, so, uh, but also I just got wind of Joe and his, I love filmmakers and guys who are passionate, he does his own camera work, so I just knew, uh, and his relationship to Josh, I just like, uh, like filmmaking teams, they really get uh, jiggy with it, so it was really fun, that's what drew me to it. So, uh, did you um, maybe garner a little bit more insight into the craft of acting by uh, being in this crazy telekinetic picture? Uh, I wouldn't say I gained insight into the craft of acting. I would say, you know, survival was more like it. It was uh, one of the more physical shoots that I've had to do. And I mean, I've done, you know, I've westerns and stuff before that that are very physical. But this, you know, we're on wires and we're, you know, we're freezing and it's, it's uh, and, and, you know, all the stunts we were actually filmed, everything you see was filmed in front of the camera, you know, it was not CGI, so we were very uh, proud of, to do that, and, and it was just like, okay, we're doing what now, and, and, and we're doing it, you know, it's like, okay, okay, so, uh, so it was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun, and we were all, Joe did an excellent job of, of, of having everybody be in the same movie, you know what I mean, where, you know, we're all coming from different places, but we were all in that same world. You know, it was very yeah, so good at that. Really great vibe on set. Absolutely a great vibe, and it was. Really, I think it helps. My theory is that if you're shooting on location and you're doing night shoots, very cohesive, really unifies the company. And that this was a perfect example of that. You know, it was like you know us against the world, and it's three in the morning. It's snowing. It's literally 20 below zero, and you know we are the only people out here crazy enough to be making a movie and that, well, that that's going to bring you together you know sure it helped uh, you get into character in that also all these conditions in that oh absolutely i mean you know it's it's quite honest when you're reacting to sub-zero temperatures and somebody's putting a metal shotgun in your hand and you can't help but be crazy you know you you just have to fall right into it and go moment to moment and you see it all on screen and that was what kept driving all of us making this insane film was just going this is gonna be an amazing movie uh, and it really is it's I'm so proud of this and I'm proud of everyone's work in it uh, and and uh, just to, to get to be a part of it as brutal and difficult to shoot as it was uh, so worth it and I'm just wondering um, what kind of experience awaits the any audience that'll come and see this film I just hope it's a roller coaster ride where it's like everything they expect comes in the first 40 minutes and then from there it even just explodes even further and like we just wanted to blow that shit up. So.